Well, this will be a laugh. Welcome to RimWorld 7 Deadly Sins, featuring the return of seven of our greatest war criminals from previous series. Representing the sin of greed, Legal Lee, sentenced for amassing millions in drug money and causing a crackhead insurrection. Representing the sin of envy, Robo Mummy, sentenced for horrific medical experiments in the pursuit of her becoming more human. Representing the sin of sloth, Shittle Dirt, Goblin Knight turned Pampered Lord, Sentence for desertion and breaking the Imperial Code of Decadence. The Sin of Wrath, General Joe, a war veteran who cut swath from planet to planet. Sentence for multiple counts of attempted genocide. Remus, the Sin of Pride, a tribal warrior from a medieval planet who founded an unstoppable empire in his own image. Sentence for building without planning permission. The Sin of Lust, Arcadius Dimos, a man who aided the return of the Arco Seed. Sentenced for apostasy. Just a staggering amount of incest. And finally, the sin of gluttony. Fat Larry. Sentenced, well, because he's fat. And welcome to hell. Or at least a newly opened Imperial Hell Planet, designed by the Galactic Stellark as the ultimate punishment for the greatest of war criminals. A planet-spanning prison designed to torture whomever is condemned to it, and thanks to the Galactic Mega Cameras in orbit, all of the excitement is beamed directly to the citizens of the galaxy's mega-screen televisions. And maybe even to a device near you. And like most game shows, our contestants stand a chance of victory, assuming they survive long enough against the hordes of demons, horrors, and the storyteller Dagotha, a way to escape the Hell Planet will open up. They will have to work together to survive the apocalyptic environment long enough to reach the ship to safety, and hopefully along the way, redeem themselves and atone for their sins, or double down on them. Who knows? The planet's atmosphere is flooded with resurrected nanites, so that if one of them should die, they'll be reborn again to continue the torture. I mean entertainment. There's a catch though. Our contestants can't just bunker down, weather the storm, and then fly away to a luxury glitter world. They will have to prove their worthiness and teamwork by collecting seven relics. One for each contestant, without which their crypto sleep casket won't unlock and they'll be stranded on the planet forever. However, the longer they stay, the harder things will get with no regard for colony wealth or combat readiness. Time is the biggest killer here. So overall, another relaxing remote series. <laughs> <laughs> and if you would like to play along for whatever sick twisted reason, the mod list, save, and Steam Workshop collection will be available down in the description. And as a quick summary for anybody who skipped over that, raids are silent, raids are deadly, the storyteller is angry, the planet is lethal, our people are immortal but not unkillable, and it takes ages for them to resurrect, so we've got to still try and avoid dying. Overall, a nice chill series, except for the fat run of Volcano and the temperature on average is 60 degrees C. But, we are starting with the cold snap, which brings it down to a more cool 50... Four degrees C. Oh god, we're all gonna die. Before we do absolutely anything, what does the map look like? Oh, wow. Oh, we've got like a weird little valley connecting to the south coast here. Well, that's really not too bad at all. It's it's easier to defend, but it's still not ideal because there's almost nowhere to grow any crops whatsoever. And to be honest, it's not even like we could build a mountain base either. Okay, here's the plan. B panic. Okay, well, maybe not quite panic. Yeah, I think we'll build a very, very tiny little mountain base over here. It's not ideal, seeing as we don't have a single good miner, but it's either that or we boil. I think we're also going to frantically chop down as many trees as possible in the hopes that we can build a passive cooler. <laughs> we also only have the clothes on our back, so food as soon as possible wouldn't hurt. I guess we could fish? Is anybody good at fishing? Uh, Fat Larry. Can <laughs> of course it would be Fat Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Does get very dark at night time, huh? That'll make those silent demonic horror raids all the more fun. A medical emergency already? Arcadius is down. We do have enough room to throw him in the cave. Remus, you spend all day on that? Good lord. Gonna build a door as fast as possible. This is for Arcadius to even stay alive. General Joe! Piss off. It's only 34 degrees in there, so between that and a passive cooler. Hey, there we go. Perfect. Well, we have shelter. We'll admit it's not <laughs> its not exactly luxury. I think the next thing to do is to get everybody on fishing, not just Fat Larry. Otherwise, we're all going to starve to death. 
Turns out Shittle hasn't quite got the hang of this. <laughs> God, I hate you. You're, you are going to kill this colony, Shittle. Oh, Larry caught something. What is that? Blood leech. Oh, good. <laughs> Breakfast is served, everybody. Wow, that looks delicious. General Joe has gotten food poisoning from blood leech. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we need to get cooking like immediately here. All right, Fat Larry, this is your time to shine, my friend. Oh, come on, Joe. You don't have to do that. Look at all these nice meals we've got of blood leeches. He smashed everything. He smashed everything that was keeping us alive. Death by firing squad. I'm sorry, there's nothing else for it. What's wrong with them now? Dehydration? Boy, I sure hope there's some water over here. Okay, we're good. Build a little Remus. Build as fast as you can. And there you have it. All the basics for survival. A cold cave in the mountain. Unfiltered, unprocessed groundwater. And all the delicious leeches you can get your hands on. Please go rescue Robert. What's wrong with her? I'm threatening dehydration. You're stood in the freaking water. Oh, it's ocean water. Okay, don't. <laughs> I take that back. Don't drink that. Remus, don't you. <laughs> what is that? Hello? Sir? Black Widow Grenadier of Vasily's Outlaws. Hello, it's friendly. Or at least it's not attacking us. I guess we'll just ignore it and hope it goes away. <laughs> oh, what is that? Two of your tribespeople have had a disturbing dream. In the dream, a tall figure with a golden mask greeted them, saying there are many rooms in the house of the master. Be easy, for the hands of your enemies I have delivered to you. Seeing they had died, and could see themselves laid upon the table lit by candles. With their own hands, they touched the figure, and the figure drew breath, open eyes, and rose from the table. The room was gone, and the world filled with light, and they awoke. Oh, that sounds good. The following tribes people had the dream. Shit on Arcadius. Arcadius has gained the trait touched by Dagoth Ur. See, I don't like the sound of that. Are you... Are you okay? Touched by Dagoth Ur. In a dream, Arcadius was greeted by the god of the sixth house. Ever since then, the bells of the sixth house quietly ring in his ears. Psychic sensitivity, 40%. Okay. Uh, well, that sounds fine. It's not necessarily a bad thing yet, I suppose. And if you're wondering why I'm not just starting a farm, the simple answer is we don't have any seeds. We might be able to chop down these brown barrel cactus and start a cactus farm. That would be a good start. The next person to kick down that fucking well is going down the well. You're being warned. Well, I mean, Fat Larry probably wouldn't fit. The next person besides Fat Larry. Fat Larry's just going to straight up go in the ocean. Ah, oh, it's Remus this time. I hope this doesn't have any long-term ramifications. <laughs> We're doomed. We're all dead. The cold snap is over. I would rather prefer that it wasn't. Well, that gave us a good three days to prepare. Thank you for that. Well, I think it's fairly safe to say at this point we've got the base under control. Why don't we go and have a look around the planet and see what's out there? So in terms of enemy factions, it's all fairly generic stuff. We have... Beastmen hordes, Thamir clans. I don't even know what those are. The Devoted of Dagoth Ur, which I didn't even know was a faction, to be honest. And then we've got insects and giant mutants, black widows and demons and whatever the hell these people are. I fear a lot of things on this planet, but whatever this faction is, I think I fear the most. So we're at the furthest south tile of the entire continent amid a sea of the pyroclastic conflagration biomes, which are all the volcanoes we're on. And if you're thinking, wow, look at the lush forest at the top of the globe. It's... Mechanoid intrusion. It's mechanoid intrusion as far as the eye can see. And while we've got a little bit of peace and quiet here, let's talk about the idea religion. And I hope you're all sitting down for this one. Because it's very complicated. We have individualist, and that's it. <laughs> individualist is our only meme, and every other precept is standard. And there is a very good reason for this. Firstly, we have fluid ideologies added by the more recent remote update. I've also got splits and schisms from Vanilla Expanded, and I've also got Organic Idea Legend. And between those three over time, I thought it would be way better if it just developed naturally. If, if something ends up being really key to our colony, slavery, cannibalism, whatever that happens to be, all those fun little things that we can do. If those become central, then it will happen naturally, rather than it just being a forced thing. Everything else for the time being is very generic. Our leader is called a leader. Our moral guide is a psychologist. Funerals are funerals and feasts are feasts. Be careful not to get those backwards. And then we have seven relics, each one correlating to one of our characters here, all of which we need to collect before we are allowed to leave the planet. And other than that, it's regular room world for now. Since it looks like we'll be here for a while, that's very optimistic. General Joe thinks we should give this faction a name. What should our faction be called? The Red Bramble Confederacy. Not a big fan of being called the Confederacy, Joe. Oh! 
God, this is too much pressure. I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea. Sinners except warm. <laughs> that is... That is unforgivable. If you have a better suggestion, please leave it in the comment and I'll take whatever's at the top of this one. Because that's just terrible. Look at that. We're staying on top of the food demand. Why don't we take a look and see what we can actually build right now? We haven't got much in the way of technology. Oh, God, we can't build a bed. Um, well, that makes things pretty difficult. 50 steel for a scrap shelter. We can't actually get steel. We can only get iron for now. These people are idiots. They can't build half of these things. Okay. Um, it turns out a sleeping spot is actually the best thing we can build right now. <laughs> it's 30 degrees at midnight indoors. I think I might build another passive cooler. A party. You're having a bloody party. There's nothing to celebrate. You're all going to get friggin' barbecued and there's nothing I can do to stop it. Well, it's a tough situation, but I feel like I can handle it. No, you can't. We're all going to die. Party has been called off. That's good. <laughs> That's more like it. That's the spirit. What a lovely cave. I think the next plan is to maybe dig a bathroom. The game has slowed down. What's happening? <gasps> Hello? Goros. Oh, shit. Rocket Joe. Okay, okay, let's go around. He's got a fish. He's got a fish. We can slap him. Maybe also send everybody else. Destroy. Come on. This is the power of friendship and teamwork. Oh! Get it, General Joe. Don't you die on me. Don't you die on me. If he goes down in the first fight, I'll I'll cry. Yes! Remus is there. Fat Larry is there. Oh, you're done for. <laughs> a weapon. A weapon. A concrete short bow. Well, that doesn't sound right at all. Who is our best shot? I, I assume it's... Yeah, it's got to be General Joe, right? You can pick that up for future use. Got a little bit of medicine. We got four beer. That's going to be great for raising mood. I'll be honest, I don't even know what you are. Oh, there are beast men. Uh, Joe? What the hell is he... Where's he going? <gasps> okay. Well, that's not ideal. He's investigating the eerie tree. Hello? Hello? I think there's someone in that tree. General Joe, are you a... you good? Sanity loss minor? That's fine. Oh dear. Performed investigation. I've looked upon all that the universe has to hold of horrors. And even the skies of spring and the flowers of summer must ever afterwards be poison to me. That's a real shame. Oh no, he seems to have <laughs> dropped from heat stroke. How anticlimactic. General Joe has begun obsessively writing strange symbols. Well, that was bloody fast. We've been here five days and the man's already lost his mind to Eldritch influence. General Joe has no memory of the writing that is still slightly dampened from the sweat of their labors. It's a ghastly book filled with strange alien language that's not readily understood. Grimoire complete. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate that. If you don't mind, I do think it's a little bit early to start dabbling in the occult. Although maybe occult entities could save us from this planet. What a lovely bathroom, shittle. Well, right now it is less of a bathroom and more of a cupboard to shittle in, but... Close enough. We've had caravan animals wandering. A group of steed, abandoned or lost. Or like horses? Oh. Uh. That's definitely not a horse. Sea biscuit. Sea biscuit. You're oh my god, sea biscuit. They don't actually have anything equipped, but they do look delicious. Oh. Magical arrival mishap. What is that? A magical flare nearby has proved to be a wayward person, and they're injured. Perhaps if you rescue them, they will join you. Rabbit! <gasps> An Australian! I'm basing that on the hat. Well, and I suppose the knife, and the beer, and the tank top. Corpus weeping pants? Oh! Corpus weepings are skin carved from a corpus victim. It's coated in hardened pus and smells rancid. Like I said, Australian. <laughs> you any good? Uh, you're not bad at all. Body modder adventurer. Oh, a couple of dumb labor or skilled labor. That's a very nice hat you have, though. Oh, he stood back up. <laughs> Damn it. Well, that's ruined that hat. Although we did get free beer. Okay, we might have a slight problem here. Just give him the old running gun. Thank God for that Australian. Otherwise, Robin Mummy would have no way to defend herself. General Joe, please hurry. Wait, they're leaving. What happened? They've decided they'd rather consume some tinkle grass instead. <laughs> yeah, so much for your friggin' tinkle grass. That didn't last long, did it? Joe, why are you so slow? What's going on here? Sanity loss, dehydration, food poisoning, malnutrition. Okay, then. For God's sake, Joe, now is not the time. Shittle. Shittle. Bring it down. You know what? Just get everybody over here. 
fuck's sake, we don't stand a chance otherwise. Stupid fucking blue horse. Lee! Oh, I, I hate these people. What do you mean, Steed Revenge? He attacked me first. Well, that went well. <laughs> and you know what? I'm sick of this volcano too. It's 62 degrees out there. Um, hello there. The blood moon rises. The horn calls. Howls can be heard in the distance. The hunt begins. The hunt of who? Couldn't possibly mean me, could you? There is a... Oh, I was about to say there's a deer here. Hersin has marked a metallivore and wishes for you to hunt it. Okay, I mean, I can, can probably do that, I suppose. What is the deer? Avatar of Hersin. Uh, I said that successfully hunting one during a blood moon will reward the hunter with a gift. Ooh, I do like gifts. Hey, bring that bow up here. Duh. The colors here howling in the distance. Hersin's hound's been... Okay, I take that back. Don't worry about the deer. Yeah, it turns out we might have a slight werewolf problem. Four werewolves. Here's the plan. We're going to take Robo Mummy and we're going to shoot them. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God, be careful. Just keep running and gunning. This is genius. It can't possibly fail. <laughs> oh, no, it's failing. Wow, how did they get so close? What? How did you even catch her? That was on flat ground. I mean, that's probably why they caught her. I mean, they are fucking werewolves after all. Okay. Go on then. Knife them. Six people versus damaged werewolves? I think we can pull that off. If we don't, Robert Mummy bleeds out in six hours. So we really don't have a choice. Let's go melee attack that one. Get him, squad. Shittle is beating it with a fish. Don't know if that's quite the right strategy. Oh my god. He's beginning to believe. They're actually doing it. Oh, God. Legally immediately went down. Are you okay? What is that? Sani... S Sani's lupus? Oh, no. If left untreated, it will eventually transition into dormant lycanthropy. Is legally going to turn into a fucking werewolf? <laughs> That's the plot twist I didn't know I needed. Um... Not big fan of that, to be honest with you. Oh my god, they're, they're actually doing well. I can't believe it. Well, with the exception of Robin Mummy and Legal Lee and Arcadius and General Joe. They got it. Hey, there we go. Okay, Lee, no pressure. I, I think you really should go and lie down. Uh, Larry is okay. Arcadius is bruised, but fine. Actually, what's their uh, health looking like here? Werewolf disease. You're fine. You're fine. Everybody's okay. So we just got two cases of werewolf disease, but other than that, when... Robin Mummy bleeding to death, I suppose. Other than that, it's good. General Joe, if you could get up here and tend to Robo Mummy fast, that'd be quite nice. Oh, that could be a problem. She's a leaking coolant, which means she'll overheat. And it's 48 degrees C outside. We got her. Holy crap. General Joe, legendary performance. Oh, God, legal Lee. <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't panic, don't panic. Uh... Resting. No, no, no. You are not. You are not. You're going to save Legal Lee's life. Or maybe you're not. Oh, God. Apparently, he's good. Okay. And now they're having a feast of werewolves. Ah. I'm curious what happens when we actually hunt the marked creature. Give it a few shots. I actually hit it, though. Hey, there we go. Okay, be careful. Assuming she can actually kill it over the course of an hour. No pressure. Oh. <gasps> Gifts. Hello. Demonette hide. Um, what? The hide of a demonette. It's tough with rough scale patches. It will offer some protection, but lack insulation. That's good. It's not like we need freaking insulation around here. Well, apparently the hunt comes to an end. Thank God. If we could not have another one of those for a while, that'd be quite nice. Apparently there's also an exotic goods trader. A caravan from Vasily's Outlaws. Hello. It's Speedy. Ironically named, I assume. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest with you right now, Speedy. I'm not sure what I can offer you, but we'll take a look, I guess. We could send them some copper or our grimoire. <laughs> this is your problem now. Yeah, I hate to say it. I really can't afford any of these things. So not sure I really want any. Ooh, the skill trainer in mining would be good. I'll give you all that copper. And the book. No, I don't think there's any chance. Turns out we had a midnight raid. I think the traders got it under control, or at least they're... Camels have got it under control. Enemy pet of Fleshmonger. Yeah, I really don't like the sound of that. Survival knife. Oh, that could be quite handy. What do you have? Combat knife? Is that a turret? Oh, it's a... 
I mean, it was a turret. Devil Strand Slaneshi Straps, huh? Oh. Sounds... Sounds nice. Gotta have a hobby. Don't tell Arcadius. While fishing, Shittel has caught something special. Eltex Helmet? <laughs> Apparently, they also fished up a crown? What the fuck? Well, I mean, headwear is headwear, right? It's better than nothing. General Joe, you get to wear the crown. Robo Mummy, you get to wear the Altex helmet. I'm not gonna lie, Shittle. I would have preferred the shitting fish. Ah. Uh, where's Remus gone? Remus? One of your tribes people have suddenly disappeared in their sleep. Well, that's fair. In the dream, a tall figure in the Golden Master led them through a series of strange tunnels into a door made of strange metal. The figure in the Golden Master stopped, turned towards them, and gestured towards the door. They immediately knew what must be done. Walking forward, they reached out to the door, effortly effortlessly pushing it open and stepped through. They woke in a place they did not recognize. The following people have disappeared. You're gonna friggin' disappear in a minute. What the hell kind of storyteller is this? Oh, by the way, one of your colonists is gone now. He better come back. He better come back. You don't have anybody friggin' capable of building now. Okay, Fat Larry. I guess we'll put Fat Larry. No, Fat Larry's gotta cook. General Joe. Congratulations, your head builder. Oh, a Garanlin tree, though? I don't think that's a good replacement for Remus, but in fact, I'm not really sure we can do much with it at all. Oh, what about Legal Lee? I bet Legal Lee could attune. He doesn't have the capability of plant work, so I, he might not be able to. Well, why don't we try it? Oh, Connector must be capable of plant cutting. Maybe when we're not so busy starving to death, we'll connect someone else. Oh, fishing fat Larry has caught beer? What isn't in this freaking river at this point? <laughs> so everybody's got something to do right now. Besides Legal Lee? Um, there's really not a lot Legal Lee can do. Oh, he can research. I was building a research table anyway for Shittle because... Well, Chittle likes to sit down a lot. I hate to say it, little Chittle, you might be out of a job, assuming I can find any iron whatsoever. Hello? Iron? Ah, oh, iron. There we go. On the plus side, though, with the leather that we got, I was able to build a very fetching demonette hide bed roll, which is probably cursed. And speaking of cursed, I've gone for a bit more eyeball-friendly user face, because that last one was driving me a little bit insane. There we go. Finally, something for legally to do around here. Not really ideal, but until we get a prison set up, he... Quite literally has nothing else to do. Now I feel like we can really start making some progress. Rather than just, you know, barely surviving. <laughs> so our first choice for research. Oh, for God's sake, this is all crap. Rather than, you know, say furniture, power, batteries. We can build ourselves a radiation chamber. We can make fine blocks of cheddar. Oh, no, well, hang on. This one's good. Complex furniture is absolutely fine. I'll stop complaining now. And I think before you know it, we're going to have a great little base set up here. Before you know it being, you know, one to two weeks. What the fuck? Hello? Feeling strange presence in the air. Two of your tribes people have awoken to a servant of Dago Thirst standing before them. In the dream, a tall figure in a golden mask led them through a familiar corridor. Oh, good. The following tribes people have an unexpected visitor. Shittle and Robo Mummy. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there they are. And everybody is running for their lives. <laughs> kind of looks like... Shittle and Fat Larry have merged to become one person? Really like that at all. Hey, stand and fight, you cowards. What is this? Yeah, much better. Ooh, be careful with that bow, General Joe. What are they fighting with? Disorientating pulse something. I assumed it's not something we can... Oh my god, it's something we can pick up. Disorientating pulse signal. A single-use weapon. Creates multiple fast-moving projectiles made of pure energy when activated. These detonate. Creating a disorientating pulse on impact. Oh, wow. That could actually be very good. This guy has a ring of knowledge. I mean, like a minor protection ring of labor. Whoa. Hello there. Okay, I'll be taking those if you don't mind. Some sort of demonic relics, no doubt. I mean, like a minor protection. Uh, what does that do? Just gives you some armor. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Now, look, General Joe is going to be the one on the front lines doing a lot of the fighting, given that he's got the highest combat stats. And then we've got something here called Ring of Labor. Gives a carrying capacity of 30. So give that to, say, Robo Mummy, who's constantly dashing back and forth, building things. And then we've also got the Ring of Knowledge, which might be a research bonus. Faster learning speed. Okay, I mean, we could still give that to Legal Lee. Brandon Money can't do anything else right now. We might as well make him be better at researching faster because he's probably not going to be doing it forever. Or he might if he gets good enough. Well, 
Yeah, I mean, give us more midnight treasures. That was fine. We should probably claim these people out, though, if you don't mind. Oh, they count as creatures, eh? Hmm. We certainly seem to not have much food left. <laughs> Fat Larry hungry. <laughs> That's kind of macabre, isn't it? Oh, what did we get? Ash salt. Grey salts that are harvested from the servants of Dagoth Ur. They accumulate within their body like a mixture of dominant ash blights and environmental ash. Can be used to produce divates of delight. A drug capable of preventing ash blights and slowing down corpus infection. Oh, that's quite useful. Okay. And then we got human meat and blood and bone and leather. You know, there might actually be benefit to butchering people if we get so many ingredients from them. People really are just full of useful things, aren't they? Oh, and there it is. A ship to the stars. That's the way out of this dump. A friendly AI from your past named Charlon Whiteston has sent you a message. Where are you, Charlon Whiteston? Oh, that's a bit spooky. I don't like that. You know, that's not nearly as far away as I anticipated. All we have to do is go around the stormy purple caribou, up through Buttermella's jewel cliffs, <laughs> round past through the horror waste, straight through the mechanoid intrusion, whatever this is, an old growth forest, and then we're basically there. That's not nearly as bad as I expected. Uh, hello? Just got cargo pods containing Black Widow Throne Silk. Okay. Oh, wow. Throne Silk is more powerful and beautiful than typical Widow Silk. That said, it can be combined with Widow Silk at a crafting bench to create Abyss Silk. Um, I think we're just going to turn it into a bedroll, actually. I love that we've got beds made out of demon skin, Black Widow Throne Silk, and Ash Demons. <laughs> <laughs> All right, never mind. We have beds now. Oh, my God. We've got beds in just about every other piece of furniture they stock in Ikea, I think. Wowee. Okay. Barrack beds. Just the same as a regular bed, just a different kind of style. Canvas beds. Slightly less resources. Actually might be very appropriate here, given that we are... We're almost out of wood already. <laughs> and sure, we've got seeds to plant more trees, but no one's got the growing skill to plant the bloody tree. And we can't get growing skill because we can't... We can't plant bloody trees. Are you seeing what I'm... You see what I'm dealing with here? We need one dedicated grower until we hit six growing. General Joe? Uh, General Joe's builder now. Arcadius? He's only got four. Uh, three, sorry. Okay, okay, okay. In that case, you know what? General Joe, you're on plant skill as well, my friend. If I select all of these cactus, that should give him a little bit of skill. And then we'll just have him chop down all of these trees. He should gain like a level and a bit of skill from deforesting the entire map, right? Uh, what? After awakening from a threatening dream, one of your tribes people have found out that they are on fire. Fat Larry is on fire. Well, luckily, Fat Larry apparently threw himself in the bath before I could even open the notification, but... What the fuck is this storytelling? Oh, your person's been kidnapped. They're gone forever. Well, I assume. I certainly hope not, but I assume so. By the way, Fat Larry's now on fire. So I suppose we could dish out the role of psychologist. We need a ritual spot to be able to do that. And I think we're probably at the point now where... We can manage it. I think, first things first, let's name General Joe leader of the faction. He suggested the name. He is a leader. He's qualified. Granted, his last colony didn't exactly go very well. But I think with General Joe in charge, we stand a, a, a fighting chance. Literally. And I think this time around, that's what we need more than anything else. Especially with werewolves turning up on day two. And then we need a psychologist. I'm, I'm hoping I can give that to Legal Leaks. He's our best social character. Okay, fantastic. Here you go. We finally got something for Legal League to do other than just sit at a desk all day. Maybe that'll keep him happy because he was probably greedy for some power. There we go. Legal Lee is also canonically a lawyer. Seems pretty good that he can reassure and counsel and I guess convert in some way. There you go. Legal Lee successfully counseled Robo Mummy, increasing a mood by eight. That's actually very good. I mean, it's not really going to make things that <laughs> different, but it's something. And you know what? I thought today we were absolutely doomed off the bat. But I feel like we really have redeemed it a little bit here. We've got complex furniture cracked out already. We've got a base and we're surviving in one of the hardest biomes going, I would say, given that it's, you know, 60 degrees out there. Also, they hate being outside because it's full of ash. Oh my God, Robo Mummy's sad because she hasn't harvested organs anytime soon. Uh, you, uh, There's no... There is no blaming them for putting you here. 
What is wrong with you people? You should be ashamed. And I guess our goal is save Remus? <laughs> I hope he comes back at some point, but who knows where we'll go next. The whole point of this is to be relatively unplanned and relatively natural in how it evolves. Maybe we want to start looking into cults a little bit. Maybe we want to focus on becoming an entirely underground, self-sufficient colony that never has to go outside. And of course, if you've got any suggestions, throw them at me. It's, it's early enough in the campaign where I can, can, you know, tweak some things here and there. And as always, if you would like to play along, please do. <laughs> I insist. Ruin your day as well. And all of that will be available, of course, down in the description. And as always, don't forget to give a thumbs up and a favorite and like to any mods you enjoy in the mod pack. And if you stay tuned after the credits, I'll go into some of the more technical things. World seed, mod setup, things you might want to remove if you do play along because there's a lot of extra difficulty in here. Yada, yada, yada. All that important stuff. And I need to give a huge thank you to not only those of you at home watching the content, but the patrons as well. Because over the last week, I've had a lot of problems with my internet. Missed a couple of days of upload. And there was really nothing I could do about it. I've already used up all my mobile data uploading videos already. So I'm completely out of options at this point. Short of going off to uh, a coffee shop and completely changing my schedule or something like that. But we will hopefully be fine going forwards but that remains to be seen so there could still be some issues as we we get things fixed swapping over to a new um you know like a new router that type of thing might be some delays with that but hopefully things should be fine so again thank you all for your patience again a massive thank you to the patrons who have been especially patient over the past week a big thank you goes out to mr chakotay chicken aromatic fool hawk c120 Passy965, Kane, Faith, Texas Yardbird, Fizzlebuns, The Valet That Crashed Your Car, Mongoose McKing, Bling Magica, That Gay Commie, Solothal, and Hoaxel for their support, the executive producer tiers over at Patreon. Thank you for crashing my car. That caught me off guard a little bit there. Thank you as well to McFluffy, the fluffiest of fluffies, Ronald DK, Blood for the Blood God, Corrupt Racer, Elite IMP, Mayor, Lady Cerulean, Roman Candle 64, Astro Boogie, Holdemord, Arrogant Awesome, Squid Eater, McGruff, Asgur, Smirtworm, Revan, and Dougie Fresh as well. So the first things first, this is going to be great news for those of you who do want to play along. I'm going to include my mod config files, which isn't something I've ever done before. There's no mod content associated with that. It's just a bunch of XMLs generated by the game for those particular mod settings. So it's not sharing any content that we're not allowed to share. Um, but hopefully with that, it'll really speed up you guys being able to jump into the mod pack, it'll all be pre-configured with the right settings selected from the mod menu. Things for storytellers and different tweaks for celestials, magic, that type of thing. Then I'll also be including the save game if you do want to play with the seven characters on that map. Otherwise, there really isn't much setting up this time around, to be completely honest with you. However, there are a few things you may want to tweak. There are mods that I included specifically to be difficult so one mod that i've never really played before but i thought was kind of appropriate in a more survival based scenario is the mod seeds please which makes it so that all plants have a seed associated with them and you need the seed to be able to plant the plant right this is the seeds please light version it inherently supports quite a lot of mods and i believe every mod that we've actually got installed but there are some issues with this that you wouldn't get using the main version however this is where more lightweight so if it works this is objectively better than the other version of the mod because it is just so much more streamlined so i'm using that one if you find that inconvenient you might want to remove that one similarly dubs bad hygiene as well is included i know some people don't particularly like that i always enjoy it but i know there are some people who don't like the inconvenience that might be another one to throw i've got it enabled for the thirst function because again it's a survival situation right one of the big difficulty factors this time around is the actual storyteller itself that being the sixth house storyteller Degotha from the moral rim co collection I, I kind of liken this a bit similar to something like Perry persistent it's a very consistent kind of little annoying storyteller rather than having big raids this might be something that doesn't particularly suit your playstyle. you might want to eat that as well and the big change that you might want to make is with my alpha biome settings so if you go into options and then mod settings and bring up alpha biome with that, I have made it so that we get no biome spawn besides the more cursed biomes. So, Mechanoid Intrusion, we've got Propane Links, Forsaken Crags, Pyroclastic, Conflagration, and the Tarpits. And then I've adjusted the commonality of that. I'd recommend 
either disabling the mod if you prefer to play a more base game experience or just re-enabling all of the bones and resetting all of this back to default that way you'll get a more base game planet with these extra biomes thrown in that is definitely bringing about almost I, I mean i'd say half the difficulty in this particular playthrough is the biome that we've chosen that would definitely make it a much more approachable experience if you start something that's difficult challenging with that kind of demonic hell theme to it without it being crushing yeah, <laughs> if that is something that you would prefer. Other than that, though, there is no mod configuration needed this time. Because like I said, I'll zip up my mod configs and put those up somewhere as well. So you can just download that, drag it into a folder the same as you would the mod list. And that should, in theory, have everything set up and ready to go without the need for anything else. So let me know if you've got any changes you made to the mod pack. We're still in the early days here and I can still make some alterations if necessary. Tweak some things to get things working uh, if it wouldn't normally. So let me know what you think. This is not going to be any it's not going to be a fun one it's going to be a challenging one but is that not part of the fun well you know some people would say no <laughs>